Hey everyone, Sam Mackay here. Now, I wanted to cover in this particular video financial years or financial year to date to be specific. Now, there is actually a couple of ways you can do this, but I want to show you one formula technique that enables you to quite quickly create a cumulative total over just your specific financial year that you specify okay and then if we've got a little bit of time at the end um I, I might show you how you you can actually do this in a, in a couple of other ways but um we'll just see how we're going i want to make this one short and sweet if we can okay so i've got a simple model here right um you know pretty generic one but you know don't get too caught up in the specific measures the techniques are all the same okay especially if you're doing financial year over anything like sales quantity revenue costs transactions you know anything that you can think of you know forecasts it, it, it is all the same technique right you just need to sub in the the, the correct core measure into the actual uh, pattern if you like or, or, or formula combination okay so the first first things first I'm just going to just set up a generic um, table here so we can just look at the data itself and this is always important I always find like getting things into tables to begin with is absolutely key and then I'm just going to bring in my core calculation in this particular case total sales okay but you know as I say could be could be anything here um, now what I want to do is I'm going to show you a really quick way of how to do this financial year total okay so I'm going to create a new measure here I'm going to go sales financial year to date and then I'm going to go calculate okay and you know with calculate all we're doing right is we're changing the context of the calculation so i still want to calculate up total sales here but i only want to do it for within a financial year today so i want to be able to select what my financial year is and then always be accumulating the amount up to the end of the financial year okay so then i have this uh, time intelligence function called dates year to date Okay, so there's actually a function specifically for this, right? Okay, so it says returns a set of dates in the year up to a current date. Okay, so if I don't if I don't specify something in a second, like specifically for my financial year, it's literally going to do the calendar year. Okay, so I'm going to put um, so I've got my date table all set up, all linked up correctly. So I'm just going to put my date column in there, and then what I want to do here is I want to specify the actual financial year. So maybe my financial year ends in june right end of june but what you know but also i mean it could also end at the end of march okay so what if i say 31st of the third so you basically put the last date the year end date so you see here year end date okay so that is the end of my financial year and then i push enter okay and then i am going to drag this in here and so you'll see here that it is working out the financial year results right so in this particular case you got to remember that that this can this can make it a little bit tricky is that i am actually selected here on a calendar year and so we're actually sort of seeing the end of say the 2015 financial year and um, we are now looking here at this particular row at the 2016 financial year okay so it's starting starting again okay now Sometimes it's easier to sort of have a look at this within visualizations as well. So let's have a look at that. And I'll, I'll create an, uh, an area chart here. So you see that we come to the end. What date is this? The 31st. So this is the end of our financial year. And then we sort of start again. Okay. Now what would be a better way to sort of set this up is you probably want to have a financial year within your slicer, right? So that it makes a little bit more sense. And so... I can come in here and I'm just going to have a look at our date table. Okay, so potentially we might have our date table already in here. Okay, so it looks like there's a financial year already embedded into this particular date table. Um, now for me to actually work, because this is just a historic model, I need to actually go back into um, into here, into transform data to actually work out, okay, well, what what is the financial year that was embedded into this particular date table? Okay, so let's have a quick look. And I'll have a look in the advanced editor here. Okay, so here in this particular date table, we started the financial we started the financial year. This is a this is a date table that enables you to um, specify when the financial year is. We specified that it started in July. Okay, so let's let's just go with that. Let's just go with that. 
Um, I'll show you in a second where you can download the ultimate date table from um, Enterprise DNA's platform in a second. But what I'm going to do here, just, just so that we can align um, the actual financial year, I'm going to change this back here to 30th of the 6th. Okay. And so this will change. So you see that changed. So the the because the dates are now different, and I'm going to bring in my financial year here instead of my year, right? And so now, if I select one of these, it's going to give me just the cumulative total for that particular financial year, right? And I can multi-select obviously as well. Okay, so not too difficult. That is that is not not too hard. And remember, you know, if you wanted to do this, I've I've, I've sort of I've got sales financial year to date, but you could do quantity financial year to date, anything. All you have to do is branch off from a, a, a different core measure and utilize exactly the same technique. Okay, and so what I can do also is, you know, we can we can utilize the analyst hub really effectively here. So, you know, I'm just at the analyst hub um, I'm signed in and I'm gonna um, improve the format, first of all, of my my measure, right? You know, as quick as quickly as that. And then what I can also do is do a quick, um, I can come in here and I can save this formula, um, financial year to date, um, formula pattern, simple dates, year to date, financial year pattern. Okay, so really simple. I'm gonna share it as a, um, as a community document as well. And so now I can reference this because um, I've got it saved within my personal, I can say I can reference this in the future very, very easily. Okay. Now, if you wanted to also have a look for the ultimate date table, and I really, really, really recommend um, going to this particular date table from now, from now on, because I myself um, go through it, uh, use, use this particular date table um, pretty much in every development that I do. So if you come, we've got, a, you know, obviously our forum is incredibly comprehensive, right? And if you come and find the M code showcase, so it's sort of hidden down here. I think we should make it more, in the future, we'll make it more more prevalent. Um, you'll see here the extended date table function. I'm sure if you type this into Google, you will get this because look, it's got a huge amount of views. Like this is a really, one of our most popular pages um, on our entire site. Um, to be honest. So extended date table, come in here and you want to create your date table using this particular code, right? Amazing collaboration with um, within the community. And so Melissa, one of our enterprise DNA experts, uh, has um, created this really comprehensive M code that you can literally take and embed into your models from now on, right? And I could even, if I really wanted to, replace the date table that is in here. I'm not going to because um, that's for another video, but uh, really, really easy to do. Okay, so that's all I wanted to cover here. Um, good luck with this one. S short, sweet, not too difficult, pretty easy. You know, you can, you can, as soon as you, you know, sort of get familiar with calculate and time intelligence functions, this stuff is seriously, seriously easy. Okay, so all the best uh, with working through this one. Take care. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website. Plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best, take care.